Good morning, church. Beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Clocks jumped ahead an hour. Maybe our bodies haven't jumped ahead an hour yet. <laughs> we'll see if people keep trickling on in. <laughs> so our theme for this month leading up to Easter has been repentance. So all of our verses are on repentance. So we're just taking time to look at our heart and look at our life and see, does this align with what God wants? Does this align with his word, with his truth, for his um, will for my life? Am I on track with him? Is there any area that I need to be on track with him? Anything I need to change along the way, any place I need to repent. So repent literally means I'm walking this way. And God says, but you need to be that way. So I turn and I walk this way. So repent to me is turning from wherever um, thought pattern you're in. Turning from that. Turning from whatever action. Turning from whatever direction we're going in. And walking in the up direction. Because you can't be in two places at the same time. So in scripture he tells us, walk by the spirit and you will not satisfy the flesh. So if God said be over here and I'm over here. <laughs> All I got to do is turn. I'm out of line. I need to get back in line. Think about if you're a driver and you're driving your car and the alignment ain't right and you all across the road trying to fight with the wheel, trying to stay on the road, stay in the lane, right? Trying to get there safe. And that's all God wants to do. He wants to get you there safe. So you got to align with him. You got to get on track with him. He's trying to smooth that path out for you. Like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Some say smooth your path, make your path smooth. So he's trying to get your car, he's trying to get your life aligned with him. So it ain't such, you still gonna have your hardships up and down. You still gonna have the highs and lows, but you know what? He's gonna be there with you because now you where you're supposed to be. Instead of over here somewhere else wandering around wondering why I keep dropping over here and dropping over there, because you're not where you're supposed to be in that area of your life. And it may be all, but it may be just some areas. He's trying to get all the areas of our life aligned with him. And one day we're going to see him face to face in heaven, and then we're going to be fully glorified with him. <laughs> Tell them we're in that sanctification process, little by little. He said, now get this in line. Now get that in line. Now surrender this. Now submit that. So that's what we're doing this month is looking at our hearts, looking at our minds, looking at our lives and repenting that it's turning from anything that God says, that ain't best for you. That's all it is. That ain't best for you. I got something better for you. Turn from that and come to me. So we're going to go ahead and come to him now. Thank you, Abba, so much that we can come to you. Thank you that you call us to repent, not because you've taken everything from us, but you're trying to give us an abundant life, a full life, a satisfying life, God. You said um, that you, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you came to give us life. Help us not to fight against your blessing, but to align with your blessing, God. I pray for each one here and those still on their way. Those that didn't realize the time change, help them too, Lord. Those watching online, I pray a blessing on them as well. That this month we'd be looking at our hearts, looking at our minds, and looking at our lives to see how can I, how can I cooperate with the blessing and victory that God has for my life? How can I not be um, fighting against the path that he wants for me, Lord? So we thank you, God, and we praise you, and we ask you to be with the service this morning, that we would have a time of just being refreshed, that we'd have a time of glorifying you, God, and lifting you high today through the music, through the word, through all the whole service time together, Lord, be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen.
talk in the absence of Elder Yama. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Restore Glory, Monticello, Florida. How many know the Lord is worthy of the highest praise?
that we can say, hallelujah, Lord, you do reign. You reign on high. Nothing can take you off your throne. Nothing can snatch us out of his hands. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we can give him the praise this morning because he is so worthy, so worthy of the praise. He takes us out of the pit. He takes us out of the mire. He comes and steps down from heaven. He had all glory in heaven. He didn't have to come down. He said, I'm going to step down because I want you, because I want you. I need to redeem you. And the only way I'm going to get you back is to step in to this earthly body. So he comes down at Christmas time as a baby we celebrate, but he didn't stay that way. He grew up in flesh, stepped out of glory and took on flesh just so that he could redeem us and died on the cross. You see those three crosses in the background and the crown of thorns right there in the background. He had to take the penalty for sin. He, there's a penalty for sin. When you do something wrong, there's a penalty for that. But he said, I'm going to take that for you. I'm going to come into flesh. I'm going to step out of glory. And I'm going to take that for you because I love you and I want you back. And the only way to get you back to heaven with me, back to your right standing with me, is to take that penalty. And I'm going to wash you and clothe you and put on my righteousness. And I'm going to take your sin. I'm going to take your penalty. I'm going to give you my goodness. And that's what Easter is all about. That's what we're building up to. That's what we're celebrating for. That's why we're saying hallelujah today. That's why we can tell him, you are worthy, Lord. All my days, I'm going to tell you, hallelujah, God, because you did that for me, because you love me like that, because you didn't stay in heaven and say, well, sucks for you. Hope that works out all right. He saw our situation. He knew we couldn't make it without him. He said, I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to come down. And he didn't just do it once for when we get to heaven. He said, for every day, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit with you. I'm going to leave comforter with you. You're going to have a piece of me every day where you can make it through this life. You can make it through your schoolwork, your tests you have. You can make it through your job every day. You can make it through the stack of bills you're looking at. You can make it through everything you face. And he said, I made forever for you, and I'm going to stay with you till we get there. Yes. That's why we say hallelujah forever all my days. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Just take this time this morning to say hallelujah to him and think of him and praise him. We're going to have our speaker this morning come up. Thank you, worship band. Thank you, team. We're going to have our speaker come up this morning. It's, um, Brother Brooks is going to bring us a message this morning. We're going to bring his podium on over here and get him up right. And uh, he's going to bring us a message this morning. And uh, Pastor is out on a trip this morning. So we pray for his um, good travel with the family and whatnot. And that... Um, we're just going to have a guest speaker as Brother Brooks, one of our very own, coming on up the hammer. And he's going to bring a word this morning to bless us, to help us, to refine us. Um, do you need us to release the children now or after you read a verse, or what would you like to do? Okay, so after we read the verse, we're going to release children to go to um, the back and learn their lesson, and he's going to give you all a lesson out here. So come on up, Brother Brooks. Good morning, church. Okay. Can we stand for the word? Okay, in unison. In love of the brethren to be tendered affectionately one to another, in honor preferring one another. Okay, okay, I'll see. <coughs> I want to thank all of you for coming out today. And like somebody said earlier, I guess some people, they, uh, time got them all messed up. Because I had forgotten about it myself until somebody mentioned it last night. I, for, I had forgotten. It. And I said, oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Time goes up an hour. Uh, let's say a prayer. Let's, let's do a prayer. Father God, I thank you for letting me wake up this morning. Because without you, there would be no me. Father God, I I want to thank you for everything that you do for our church family, for, our, for the whole world, Father, because we know without you there is no us. Father God, I want you to bring, help me to bring this word that you gave me and uh, let me loose, Lord. Let me loose and let me say what you want me to say, Father. Father God, I love you. I care for you. And Father, I know you are my everything and you are the everything to all of us. All this blessing I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm 
I'm just bringing a word, y'all. I'm not a preacher now, but I'm just bringing a word. Yes. I consider myself a teacher, not a preacher. <laughs> okay. And what I want to talk to you today about is one word. Respect. Respect. Uh, my brother-in-law, he always, I know some of y'all remember Aretha Franklin. R-E-S. P-E-C-T. He loved that song. Respect. And respect goes a long way, y'all. What is respect? Respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, their qualities, and their achievements. And, you know, I wonder sometimes in life and especially now. Seems like we have lost a lot of respect. All of us. We, we've lost a lot of respect and, and things that we do and we say. And I know when you're talking and, and uh, especially when you're talking with young folk and whatever and you know and we like to go back to when we were growing up and we've all been there. You know you know, I'm 71 years old, and uh, we've all been there. And I know a lot of times folks want to say, well, things didn't change. Of course, things change. Every generation changes. Every generation. But some things in life never changes. Some things, I don't care what you say, some things in life never changes. The true meaning of respect is showing regard for their abilities, whether, uh, 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 let me get my glasses uh, for their abilities and their worth. An example would that be uh, your teachers, your parents. You know, we can all think back on folk that we really, really respected. And uh, life sometimes throws us some curved balls. And we all see that sometimes. We throw us some curved balls and, and we don't see things. But respect is a big thing. Why, uh, why, is, why is respect so powerful? It helps us to feel safe to express ourselves when we respect each other. Uh, sometimes in life we walk around and we, we talk about being respectful to people. And we, sometimes we find ourselves being respectful to certain people in life. And I'm going to tell you something about life. Sometimes in life we, we tend to think we got this person over here and they all, they all with you. And have you all heard those songs say some folk, you know, they, you know, when you win, you win, you, when, when you're winning, everybody love you. But when you're losing, you see who your real friends who really care about you. When you're losing, when you're on the, on the losing side, you know. A lot of times we don't, you know, we, we, we tend to want to be up all the time. We want to be with this group. We want to be with that group because we think that they are all about what's going on in life. But it's not all the time. I, can, I know myself, some folk that we always thought about as not being a respectable person. I can remember when I was growing up and the church was, what, here to uh, uh down from here to the uh, 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 Winn Dixie, from where I live, and right up the road from Winn Dixie, I mean from the church, was the uh, Cloud Nine Club. I know some of y'all heard of it. I grew up right in that area. And I can remember the, the Cloud Nine wouldn't even open up until after church was over. It wouldn't even open up. And if they had an evening program, Hello. If they had an evening program, <laughs> if they had an evening program, like two or three o'clock, you know, they'd go up to, to the to, to the Cloud Nine Club, and you know, they had to drink and beer and liquor and their different things. But you know something that I noticed when I was growing up, and some of y'all in the audience, you you grew up in the same community that I grew up in. 
they might be feeling pretty tough. You know, it be get this stumbling and coming. But one thing about them, if you ever notice, and I don't know where this happens today, but one thing about them, you would notice, when they got by the church, they would try to straighten up, <laughs> put the rip liquor in the pocket. You know, they, they, they would. They would try to straighten up and, and, and put the liquor ball in the pocket and try to, you know, go on. But now, I tell you, we don't, I wonder sometimes in life, do we respect ourselves? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Do we respect ourselves? Sometimes we don't respect ourselves. You know, we, we, we tend to do things and, 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 and well, I'm, I'm not going to get all into, you know, folk business and everything, but, you know, you know, some of the things that we wear in our lives and stuff. Sometimes some of the things, I mean, if you want to be respected, you want people to respect you. You got to carry yourself. Respect is earned. It's not just given to you. It's earned. Respect is earned. Some of the things that we do, some of the things that we wear, some of the things that we say, it's not respectful. And people love to throw it up. Well, you know, this is a new generation. You know, they just, and, and stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Like I said earlier, some things in life never, never changes. Never changes, you know. And, 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 but we'll try to, and, and I'm going to tell you something, too. When we were growing up, being respectful to your parents and stuff. Now, my mom, she died in uh, 2009, and she was 92 years old. And one thing I never did, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I, yeah, I, I took a drink, yeah. But your, my mama would tell you, I was about maybe 60 years old, or maybe even more, before I even would take a drink in front of my mama. I wouldn't do that. I knew she knew I, I did, but I wouldn't do that. I was respectful enough to not do that. I wouldn't do that. And i tell you something else parents. It's all right to have fun with your children, but you don't need to be out there partying with your children now. I'm telling you now, it's going to come back to haunt you now. You know, it's going to come back. You know, if you go to a club or something and you see your child or, 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 or whatever, grandchild or something in there, you need to leave. You don't, we're really, you shouldn't have been there. 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 You know, you had your time. You've had your time. Now let them do their thing. You know, because how would you feel you in a club or whatever and your parent is in there? Somebody got to go. <laughs> Somebody got to leave. And one thing too, uh, be respectful to your teachers. Be respectful to your parents. And parents, be careful what you say around your children. When I was growing up, some things that you just didn't say around children, you tell them to go out the door. And I can remember sometimes, you know, back in the day, you know, folks used to dip a lot of snuff and all this kind of stuff, and you sitting there, they go on out, go on out the door. You, you still sitting there. You don't want to, you want to get it all, get it all. They get to talking and they're just, Spit in your face and, and keep it moving. You need to leave. You don't need to be there. And we talk all kind of stuff around children that we shouldn't talk around. We shouldn't say around children. Mama said this. Daddy said that. Jesus, you know, that's one thing that we don't, we want to party with our children. We want the grandchildren and everybody else. And this is not, God don't want that. Obey your parents. No matter how you might feel about, that's still your parent. That's still your parent. No matter how you might feel or how they are or whatever, respect them. Respect them. Uh, pull up on Ephesians 6.2. Ephesians 6.2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, that's the first commandment with, with a promise. Say, if you honor your mother and your father, your days will be longer and better. Honor them. 
nothing no worse to see a child in a store or wherever and they're cutting the food, carrying on, stomping and all on the floor and all this kind of carrying on and, and, and folks first thing they want to see you, you know, but when my kids were growing up, we had two girls, me and my wife, two girls. And one thing he would tell you, I, I didn't go shopping with them a whole lot because I'm not a shopping man. I'm not a shopping man. And you know ladies like to do a shopping. Ladies can shop, get up in the morning and shop all day. You know it. And the average man in here, you know what I'm talking about. If I want me a pair of shoes, I'm going to the store. The store say, well, these look good. Let's, these look all right. Oh, wait, 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 honey, wait, they look cheaper now. I, I'm all right. Give me, the, if they ain't too outrageous, give me them pair of shoes, and I'm gone. I'm gone. That's just me now. But I'm not going to be going to this store and that store and stay 15, 20 an uh, hour. You come out, you ain't got nothing. Or you come out, you got a little bag about that long. And then you run around, you, you go back to the, to the same store you left from. I just go get me a seat and sit down. And, mostly, and if you go to shopping centers, that's what you see. You see mostly men sitting in a chair, waiting on the wife or the significant other. You know, you know. Because that, that's not us. As men, we don't do a whole lot of shopping. That's why you don't see a whole lot of stores for men, like, like they do for the ladies. But, you know, these are some things that we need to think about when we are, you, you know, doing things. We need to be respectful. Respectful. I have seen so much stuff that go on that you hate to see it. Just say, my goodness, I know times going to change, but what, what's going on? What is going on? You know, life is short when you really look at it. Life is short. Life is short. And we should try to do what we can to be respectful to everybody, to do the right thing. You know, don't be out there trying to do some of everything in the book and, 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 and all this loud music and, 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 you know, in your cars and stuff. I don't want to hear your music. That's your music. Me, I don't want to hear it. I don't need to hear that. I don't, you don't need to hear my music. If you get in the car, you can hear it. Other than that, I don't want to hear that music. You know, that's not respectful. That's not respectful. But anyway, go to 1 Peter 2.17. 1 Peter 2 and 17. Is that the one? Okay. For some reason, I thought Ephesians was 6 2, honor your father and your mother. Yeah, yeah. But in, uh, 1 Peter 2 17, respect everyone and love the family of believers. This verse emphasizes the importance of respecting everyone, regardless of their position of social status. Did anybody ever see, I can't remember the name of the movie, but the guy taught, the, uh, he, he was a janitor. But he taught uh, 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 the surgeon how to operate. Well, I, did anybody see that movie? He was a black guy, and, and he taught, and it was a true story. No, no, it wasn't the butler. But uh, he taught, he showed them how to operate. And, but he was, the, he was a, the maintenance man. He cleaned up the floors. And never look at people by what they look like all the time and think that you got them down pat. People can fool you. People can fool you. You know how, you know how the rich folks stay rich? By acting poor. You know how the poor folks stay poor? By acting rich. <laughs> you can't determine what a person is. You can't read the book, tell the book by looking at the cover all the time. Amen. That ain't what it is. So be respectful. You never know who you're talking to. We even go back to the Bible, you know. You was waiting on, on Christ, you was waiting on Christ, remember? And, 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 and oh, they were waiting on Christ to come. We waiting on him to come. He told him, I, I've been in your house, but you didn't let me in. You thought I was somebody else. 
You know? So never look at a person and think you know what that person is all about. You never know what that person is all about. Uh, First Corinthians 10, I mean 16, 14. Let all that ye do be done in love. Love is the foundation of respect. When you love someone, we naturally treat them with respect. If you say you love that person, you're going to treat them with, with respect. You know? And everybody, I think everybody craves respect. And especially, ladies, I'm going to say this. And some of y'all know this, and some of y'all might not. One thing about men, we got a few men in here today. We crave respect. A man craves respect. You can talk about the stomach, how you love to eat and all this kind of stuff, but the bottom line, a man, I'm talking about a real man now. We crave respect. If you don't respect us, we ain't got nothing for you. You could be the prettiest thing in the world, whatever. You could be the best cook. You could do all these things, but if you don't respect me, I got nothing for you. Am I right, me? Huh? We crave respect. We crave it. Respect. Ladies, you all want somebody who you know that can take care of you, that you feel safe with. A lot of times a lady will marry a person, not necessarily because I love them, but I know that he, was, he could take care of me, I was safe with him, or whatever. That's what most women, I'm not saying all, because there's exception to any rule. But most of the time, that's what ladies want, somebody who I can trust, I can, that's going to protect me, going to take care of me. They'll marry somebody like that other than they may say, I love that fellow over there, but I knew he wasn't about nothing. I loved him, but I, he wasn't about nothing, so I married so-and-so. You know? Y'all know I'm telling the truth now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's the way it is, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 5.17. 1 Timothy. Okay, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in teaching. If you are elder, you should be looked upon and, and, and thought upon as being somebody who, who, who's really doing something. They, they, they've earned that. And I've heard some people say, well, you know, in the, in, in the Bible, you know, the, he didn't, they, 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 they didn't pay nobody. They didn't pay the preacher. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. But, you know, you need something. You need something for what you do. You do. Now, I don't expect for you to go and just, just live off the folk now, you know. But, you know, you're supposed to give them something. I believe that. You're supposed to give them something all the time. So be, be, be ever, you know, uh, 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 mindful of that. Be ever mindful of that. Uh, how many people in here that you have parents, mothers and fathers, that you really, really respected? Are teachers. Yeah. Now, some, some folk... You know, they don't respect the parents. They don't respect the, the, the teachers and, and all this kind of stuff. You know, we have become a country of people that almost anything goes. You can say what you want, but just about anything goes. 
so-and-so did so-and-so. Oh, well, they did so-and-so because of this. They, called, they did because of that. And we started making excuses, started making excuses. And, and a lot of times we're making things worse. Something, the, 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 the good book tell you it's not right. And you still want to do it. Well, things have changed. It ain't like that no more. Things have changed. Yeah, things have changed. They're going to always change. But certain things, like I say, I keep repeating, certain things never changes. I don't care what you say. You got to honor people. You got to respect people. And when you don't show respect, why should somebody respect you? You come in, you say anything you want to say, do anything you want to do, talk to people any kind of old way, you know. It's not right. It's not right. And we often talk about the young folk, but we got a lot of old folk to do the same thing. And they be watching us. They watch us. And that's why I was saying earlier about be careful what you say in front of your young folk. Some, some things you just supposed to do with adults only. I'm going to tell you now. Some things you just adults only because they're going to they gonna stick together on you. I'm going to tell you now. They, they, <laughs> you can say what you want them. They're they going to get together on you. You know you've had them do it. We did it when we, I was coming along. You know, uh, uh, Go and ask your go, go go and ask your mama. Your mama says no. Oh, oh go 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 and ask your daddy. You know, and then then you already know she said no. But what your mama said? If she said no, means me no. And one thing about it, you if, if if we you know we married or we 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 together and we got children, we should stick together. We should stick together. Don't let them ask me something. I say no, ask you, it's yeah, and then you go ahead with it. But they just playing a game on you. There you go. Putting one against the other. And like I say, that's why we shouldn't, certain things that we shouldn't do in front of our children, certain things we shouldn't say in front of our children. Because it's just like anything else. Sometimes they take things and it ain't the right way. They add to it, they take away from it. And we, Next time you hear, and you know when, when they say it, they had to have gotten it from an adult. We should be very, very careful of this kind of stuff. And respect is, that's, that's one of our biggest problems, I think, here in this country today. Yeah. It's not being respectful. And that covers all of us, not just to, just the young folk, but the older folk too. We need to be respectful. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, give somebody the time of day. What's wrong with saying, how you doing? What's wrong with that? Nothing. I ain't, I ain't taking nothing from you. You know, because I say, how you doing? Some people won't even speak to you. Yeah, some people won't even speak to you. Look you dead in your eye, won't even speak to you. You know? And now, they was talking about, I heard them talking about, um, you know, in the, in the uh, schools now, they're supposed to be start teaching kids how to manage their money, which is a good thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that. I agree with that. But, you know, we need to get something about being respectful. I was looking at something here the other day and say how they do in Japan. I don't know if anybody saw this or not. See, with their children, say they, they don't even give children tests until they're in the fourth grade. Some of the things that we do over here that we can do better, listen to somebody else. Another thing that they do, they say, uh, in Japan, schools don't have janitors. Of course, you know, if you got a, something broke down, they're going to bring in an air conditioner. I'm, I'm not talking about that. You know what they do? The kids keep the place clean. They messed it up. Amen. They messed it up. But, you know, here we go again. Oh, well, my baby don't got to do that. 
They don't do nothing at home. They don't got the sweet no flow. You got all, thousands of kids out there. Why can't they keep the place halfway? What's, what's wrong with that? I, I know somebody might say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's taking somebody else's job. And, yeah, you know, yeah. What's wrong with it? When I was out of the prison, that's, what, that's who did the work out there. The prisoners did it. Why, what, what need to bring somebody else in to do the cleaning? You messed up? Clean it up. But those are some things. And they say another thing that they, they, they do with their, their children. They say that the, 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 uh, 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 the, the rate of kids being coming to school, they say it's almost 100%. And we got all kind of problems now trying to get kids back in school. Do they still have the truant officers? I don't know. Anybody? Do they have truant officers still? Okay. Okay. You know, because I know they had them back in the day. But, uh, you know, but, but these are things that we don't want to talk about. We, we should, but me looking at it, I thought that was a good idea. Why can't the kids, and it'll help you at home. They come to them, they go home, and they know how to sweep the floor, know how to do a little thing, wipe down. And that's not going to kill a child. It's not going to kill it. I don't want my child doing that. He ain't got to work. He ain't got to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's teaching them values. It's teaching them values. It's going to help them later on in life. And I'm going to tell you, boy, it's rough out here. It's rough out here. And some of you young folk who maybe have just gotten out of high school or gotten out of college or whatever, you know what I'm talking about now. When mama said or daddy said they didn't have it. Now you see. And especially now. Everything is through the roof. You either get it or keep walking. This too, you know, there's no need, Harley, really and truly, to go in any store now and say, that's too high. Everybody's high. Everybody, everything is high. Everything. You you tell me one thing, just about think about one, Holly, one thing that you can think about now that hadn't really gone up in price, sometimes two and three times. Everything is high now. You know, you want it, you're going to buy it. If you don't want it, keep walking because somebody will come and get it. <laughs> the prices, they've already been set all around, all around. But respect, respect your elders, respect your teachers, respect your parents. And one thing I, I hate, I really do hate that a lot of times now, it seems like our younger folk don't want to listen to the older folk no more. They don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Or it's go in one ear and come out the other one. You know? But you got to remember this. We've been there. We've done that. It ain't going to work. It's been tried. I done tried it. It won't work. I'm telling you, I done told you it will not work. It didn't work when I was doing it. It ain't going to work now. And then when it doesn't work, and I told you it wasn't going to work, here you come. I told you it wouldn't work. It didn't work then, it ain't going to work now. And I know you want to do your thing. I know you want to do your thing, you know. But some things you got to listen to somebody who's been there. I've done it. I've seen it. But it's just like in the Garden of Eden. God told them, y'all can have everything out here. Everything that belongs to you, except for that tree right there. Don't mess with it. Why is it that we always want to mess with something that we, we don't want to, you know? It's just like children. You can get a child in the house and they're two or three years old and you tell them, just, all right, you know, but don't, don't bother this uh, microphone now. You, you, everything you, know, you can mess No, it might not be the first, but they're going to sit around and look. Yeah, they'll make their way, beeline their way right here. And he's going to grab it. He's going to check you out and see what you're going to do. Because you done told him not to mess with it. And when he picks it up, what you do?
You know what he's going to say? Mom and dad ain't about nothing. Mom and dad ain't about nothing. They told me if I mess with that, they, what they was going to do. They ain't do nothing. Kick that little hand and say, don't you do that no more. But if you start moving stuff, and I don't understand. You know, we've all been there. you got to move some children small and, and make, well, it's just a baby. But when that baby gets six or seven years old and doing the same thing, hitting you back, knocking on you, all this kind of stuff, it ain't funny no more. It ain't funny no more. Now, what kind of excuse you going to make for him now? He's still a baby, you know. Well, he just, he, he cutting the fool and carrying on. Well, he just sleepy. He, he just sleepy. Okay. Tell it like it is. You got to teach him. And, it's, and, it's, and, and you're not being rough. You're not being hard. Because this is a tough world out there. And I'm going to tell you something. All this thing about looks and all this stuff, that's good too. But you done find a bunch of them with good looks and everything over in a ditch somewhere. Looks can only take you for some, for, so far. Sometimes looks will get you through the door, but that don't mean it's going to keep you there. Huh? So be respectful. Be nice to people. Because one thing about it, if you go to the graveyard, you ain't going to be able to tell who's a millionaire. Who's a, who, who, who ain't, ain't never had nothing, ain't nobody took nothing with them. Nothing. And that's just life, y'all. But be respectful. Be respectful. I tell you, be respectful whether you're adult, child, or anything, but especially children. Be respectful. When I was growing up, if, 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 I did, if, a, if a, uh, an adult told me something, I might not agree with it, but I ain't going to say nothing. I just go out doing it. Like my mom used to say, well, if you get mad, just go out door and kick the tree. <laughs> go out door and kick the tree. But you better not say nothing to me. I, I can remember one time, I'll never forget this here. I, I, this is what it was. My mom, I told my, I got mad about something. I told my, I said, I'll be so glad when I get grown, I can leave here. And what I want to say that for? You know, you know how you get sometimes. And so I was going to run. You know, I know she couldn't catch me. <laughs> she picked up a brick. <laughs> you run. You run. <laughs> I know somebody said, me, oh, that's child abuse. Shouldn't have done that. But it made me a better person. <laughs> it made me a better. She didn't hit me with the brick now, but I'm just saying. You know, some things in life you just got to do. Yeah, yeah, kick the brick, you know. And yeah, the brick did, yeah. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm all right. I'm all right. But you see, and, and, and a lot of times, too, in school, young folk, I know y'all going to have so-and-so, the best dancer, the, uh, the best athlete, the best this and the best that. You look at them 10, 15 years later. That was the on my yearbook. That was the one they say was going to do this and going to do that. And the very one that, that nobody thought nothing about. Walked by them every day. Ain't thought nothing about them. Look at them today. So that's what I'm telling you. Be respectful. Don't never think because just what you see is, is, is not all the time that kind of way. And the Lord will fix it sometimes when you got to go straight back. You can't go to nobody else but that person. But you was ugly to them. Very ugly to them. I've seen it in life, and some of us who got some age to us, we know what we're talking about, and you know what I'm saying is the truth. And I'm not saying in every case, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. That's what man said they was going to do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what God said was going to happen with them. Right. Huh? Man said, oh, they're going to be this, and they're going to be that because they're smart, they this and they that. Okay. But it's all about choices, too, that you make in your lifetime. It's all about choices. Sometimes you look around and you say, so-and-so had it much better than I had it, and look at them. Choices. And parents, don't let your children talk to you any kind of way. Don't do that. They should respect you. You are their parent. 
And I've seen so many times in life that here's a five or six year old. They telling them their the mom and the daddy what to do. Now who's the parent here? Who who who's the parent here? You or them? Who's the parent? I can remember the time when I was growing up, you know, you get to crying and cutting the food. You better, you better stop. I'm going to put this on you. Now, you cry now. You, if you stop crying, I'll take you by Mickey D's and get some. No. <laughs> and they listening to that, and they see that, and they're going to do that. Because they, cause that's, that'll get what I want. That's just human nature. We're going to get what we want. But anyway. Life is short, but be good to people, be respectful to people, yes. treat people right. Because you never know who you're going to need in this lifetime. And a lot of times, it's fixed where that the very person that you need, you didn't treat them right. And the one that you thought were your buddies and your friends, they, 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 they don't even come to see you. I went by to see a guy yesterday, and he was telling me, he said, you know, uh, he had a stroke, and he said that, um, you know, I hang with the guys, and I think one, maybe two came by to see me. He said, you really find out who really care about you when things, when, when, when you're down. You, you find out. You go to a funeral. Everybody's there. Joe stayed a block down the road, and you never went to see him. And you knew he was sick. You knew he was sick. You never even, you never even dot the man dope. But as soon as he died, everybody there. Ooh. Come on now. Come on. We do it all the time. And if you want to see a lot of people that you hadn't seen in a long time, go to the funeral. They there. They are there. But anyway, I thank y'all for coming out. And, you know, it's kind of a small crowd, but I, I, I just blame it on the time. <laughs> I blame it on the time. Uh, <coughs> okay, uh, let's uh, do a prayer, and uh, then we'll go into our let the intercessors come. Father God. Again, I thank you. I think I, I, I hope that I did what you wanted me to do. Father God, I hope that I touched somebody. Somebody, Father. Because you know what I'm saying, Father God. It is the truth. And one thing about it, Father God, when you do what you want you want done in life, everything will be all right. We all fall short. We all need you. We love you. And you are everything to us, everything. And I love to say this, my father, is that if there's any separation in our lives, it's always on our part. All these blessings I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Intercessors, come up, please. yourself or a family member or a friend or whoever feel free to come forth. But first I would just like to say that I thank um, Brother Brooks for that word. It was an awesome word. Awesome word having respect because you know these days it has gotten so hard with our younger people you know being respectful and everything. You got kids now killing their parents over a piece of chicken or something yes. just because they won't let them cook it or something. It's just so even these days, so we have to pray for our kids. Pray for them and teach them and teach them on how to have respect for one another and for themselves. So if anyone needs prayer today, you will feel free to come forward.
we want to always remember a teaching sometimes can take you a long way so, and, and, and bring some things to your thought and your heart and your mind. But the one thing you need to know that is it's a mindset. It's all it's a mindset. It's a mindset that if you want to follow Christ. It's a mindset if you can hear the word and walk with the word. It's a mindset if you want to turn from the word and go your own way. But you have to have the right mindset, even coming out of school or doing anything. You can have a mindset to go to work and make a living for you and your family. Or you can make a, a, a mindset to say, I'm going to be on the system. Which is, hallelujah, which on the system, you are already a failure. You know, the system is supposed to help you to get up and go do some things. But if you rely on the system, your mindset is in the wrong direction. You need to have a mindset to go to work. God made your able body to go to work. You know, one thing about this church is a lot of advertisement on the board about places needing somebody to work. An able body need to be working. I've been working. I've been working since I can remember being able to walk, and I think I was about seven years old. And back then, and a lot of y'all don't know about this, back then you had to go in the watermelon field, a whole watermelon. You know, you had to go to work. My, my grandparents said, you got to pay your key. But the thing is, th that mindset was stayed in me to work and to provide for my family. Uh, I, you know, I know when you go to the system, I remember being in the military, and we were stationed in Baltimore. And I was telling my wife, I said, man, we need, we need a little bit more. Let me go down and see if I can apply for something. But they get you all your business, everything. And then they don't give you nothing. They say, well, you're making a little bit too much money. I'm still on, I'm still on pole po line, but you, but you have to have a mindset to do some things when you get out of high school. You have to be able to not, when you get out of high school, get you a job. I ain't talking about a McDonald's or anything like that because you can't sustain a family at a McDonald's or Starburst. You got to go, unless you're going into management. You have to have a mindset to go into something that's going to pay you money to take care of your family, take care of yourself, so you don't go on the system because um, the system is providing just a little pass for you. But yeah. the main thing is, we are right now, the intercessors are on the, uh, pretty much in revelations right now. And the things that we're already seeing and the things that to come, we are, and we made a little humorous joke in the back. You know, I said, why the preachers don't want to preach on revelation? And, and me being like I am, I said, uh, I don't know, maybe they might be the devil themselves. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, I don't know. I don't know why they don't want to preach on it. But that's the time we are, that's the time we are in. We're in revelation. And, and I, be, I behoove you, each and every one, to pick up your word and it's starting Revelation. You don't have to start at Genesis. Start in Revelation because that's where we're at right now. Because there's wars and rumors of wars. There's, I heard someone talking of locusts coming. You know, it's everything that God has already said is in the Word. And it's going to be. So if you're following God, study His Word, especially in Revelation right now. And like Brother Brooks said, the world needs love. The world needs truth. You know, the truth will make you free. Amen. If you want to stand on anything, stand on the truth. Anything else going to fail, but the truth will always stand because that the truth is God. And he's always going to be standing. And the uh, thing is, we just want to, you know, it's not about a show or anything like that. It's my thing is, and uh, it keep rolling in my head, mindset, mindset. It's mindset to come to church. Mindset to do God's will. Mindset to love one another. That's a mindset, you know, because you got a mind to, it's just like I'm going to make my mind up to go to Win Dixie after church. It's a mindset. I'm going to Win Dixie. But it's, it's all your direction is depending on mindset. Like Brother O was saying, we started for our month of March, the innocence we praying on repentance. And um, I gave a prophecy that the Lord had gave to me. I don't know if everyone was in here or not um, at that, that Sunday that I did it, but as I was beginning to write my children, I was beginning to write them a message that Sunday morning, and then the Lord started speaking in my heart and telling me what he wanted me to tell his people. And the, the word was repent now. Mm -hmm. 
He said, turn from your wicked ways. He said, for I, the Lord, am coming to judge the world, y'all. He coming. He said, and when I come, I'm coming swiftly. He coming fast. So it's time to repent and turn from those ways, those simple things that we are doing, and turn to him. Yeah. Because he's our only help, y'all. Like Brother Olsa, it's a mindset. We can choose to go to hell, or we can choose to go to heaven. It's a choice. Your mindset, it's a choice. You got, got a choice to make. And I want everybody, I want, you know, and not just what I want, because I got to give an account for my own yeah, self. Yeah. Everybody in here got to give an account for themselves. Yeah. I can't go for you, and you can't go for me. Yeah. Amen. So he wants to change. He wants to turn, yeah. turn and come to him. Yeah. Stay focused. Keep our eyes focused on him. Yeah. Look to the hills from which cometh our help, because our help comes from him. Yeah. He's God and God all alone. He's the only God. Besides him, there is no other. Yeah. Amen and amen. amen. I had to say that. Repent. Amen. Repent. Amen. Sister Christine. With, with that gospel message being preached, I can't help but to ask, you know, we just have one more second of prayer here, but if there's anybody in the house that just needs to come up and say, I need um, that salvation, I need what you, I talked about that heaven, I choose heaven, just come on up for prayer um, and just take this time, but we're just going to have another quick minute for prayer. Otherwise, you know, just know that God's with you, he loves you, and he's going to see you through. But if you, if you realize what she said is true, I need salvation, I want to choose heaven, now's your time. of the church are open as well thank you for reminding me of that if you decide i want to be a member of the church then that would be a good time to come up and say um, that you would like to join for membership salvation is not the same as church membership um, salvation is saying i want what sister rooks was talking about heaven and the payment that jesus gives to us for um for our sins um the church the church membership is saying i now want to be a part of this body of christ and i want to serve in this church and i want to be a part of this so if you want church membership or salvation this will be the time If not, I'm going to go right into offering. Okay, I'm just making sure. I don't want to step on no toes, but I'm going to go ahead and do offering. <laughs> All right, there we go. So the ushers are going to go ahead and pass around your envelopes and pens if you need it. Go ahead and flag them. They'll let you know if you need an envelope and a pen. The other ways you can give is you can um, give online with Cash App or the PayPal app. Um, if you are online and you need to mail it in, send your check or money order to Restore Glory Christian Center, P.O. Box 219, Monticello, Florida, 32345. Or you can give a church a call at 850-997-7422. I mean, that's 997-7422. Um, oh, that's for announcements. Or that's, that's, we'll do that later for announcements. Yeah. So then um, offering is just a time to give back to God and to say um, thank you, God, for all you're doing. From beginning to end, we started with hallelujah. We're going to praise him forever. And this is one more opportunity to say hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being my daily provision, my daily bread. Thank you, God, for seeing me through. He asked us to give him 10% as tithe and then offering anything above that. So that's a way of putting him first in our life and saying thank you, God. I trust you. I praise you. I put you first in my life. So um, we're going to go ahead and pray over your offering. If everybody's settled there for a minute. Thank you, God, for your provision. Thank you for your care. We do say hallelujah, God. Thank you for your care. Thank you for being the Lord of lords and the King of kings, that you reign on high. You're our good Father that loves us, and you're the King that's able to provide anything and everything we need. So we come to you with trust, with adoration, with praise, to give you the glory in our life, Lord. Please bless the, um, the tithes and the giver, and we pray that all of it will be used for your kingdom, for your name, and for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on up and put your envelope, if you need, in the bucket there.
women's ministry will meet March 16th at 12 o'clock at the church. Please bring a snack. Um, please contact Mary Brooks at 850-509-7507. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we'll be meeting right here March 16th. All right. Financial giving statements are now available. To receive your statements, see Sister Michelle Pell or Brother Franklin, Franklin Brooks, both which are here today, or email um, giving at restoredglory.org if you would like to down your, download your own. Um, you can send a request for instructions to giving at restoredglory.org. Let's celebrate March. Um, we have our church anniversary up there. Um, one of our anniversarians are in the building today, Sister Shamika <laughs> Frazier. We're going to be celebrating her anniversary all month long. Congratulations, darling. All right, our birthdays, we celebrated Brother Otis Norton and Miss Alberta and Jane and James Bradley and Avion Davis. And we have Miss Mary Brooks in the building. Where she went? She left her. All right. Where's she, she coming up? All right. So we got her and uh, Annie on the third. Um, Brother Stanley Ellison and Carter Reed and Delvion Ellison coming up. Um, so we'll be celebrating you guys' um, birthdays. All right. If you don't see your date, please send it to media at restoredglory.org so we can <laughs> celebrate you guys. All right. Easter egg hunt. Here comes Peter Cottontail. <laughs> Going down the bunny trail. <laughs> All right, First Methodist Monticello Church is hosting an Easter egg hunt on March the 23rd, 2024 at the Rec Center, 1380 Mamie Scott Drive, beginning at 1030 in the First Pavilion. There will be games, food, a dunk tank, the Easter egg hunt, and the prize baskets. So please come out, bring your kids to the Easter egg hunt on the 23rd. All right. All right, if you have any female high school seniors in your congregation who plan to attend an HBCU, please encourage them to apply for this for your scholarship, um, the Elria Snelling Gibbs Scholarship 2024. The deadline is March 22nd, 2024. So there's a QR code. Um, you can email xyqsscholarship at gmail.com for more info. All right, work, 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 work. Foundations, essentials to move you forward. Summer opportunities, get paid to learn. This is a great opportunity for the young people. So this is a part-time summer position. It impacts the lives of youth for years to come. So this is a great opportunity for um, the young people. Make sure you go to youth at careersourcenorthflorida.com. Great opportunity for the summer, for the young people. Give them something to do. Glory Kids Spotlight. Do, 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 do. That's my drum roll. Do, 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 do. No, no. Okay. <laughs> they ready, too. They ready. Okay, so I'm ready. Okay, so I'm about to bust the aisle down. If you want to say your memory verse, now's the time to come on up and to get a prize from the prize bag. Make sure I get my thing out of here. <laughs> That's not a prize. <laughs> You can tell it keeps falling over. It means it's a little bit empty. We need to fill it up with more prizes. So I'll be hitting the store after church, fill it up again. But are you saying the, the memory verse for us, or are you saying the books? Because the books we're going to do at the end. You know the books. He knows the books. He's going to tell us the books. Okay. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Woo! All right. Very good. Go ahead and did you want to pick the class? He said, I just do it for the satisfaction of doing it. <laughs> All right. You doing the memory verse? No. I do 6 to 10 in the memories. You can. I don't have the big prize bag for the fourth Sunday, but you can say it if you want. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel 1, and Samuel 2. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? All right, there we go. So for all of you out there, we are learning both the books of the Bible as well as our monthly memory verse. The memory verse is Psalm 27.1. If you're working with your young people to learn that, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And then the um, 
the books of the Bible, we have a QR code up here. You can scan that QR code. It takes you to a link that plays a video that has the song that sings all the books of the Bible because there's 66 of them to learn. And we did last month, one through five. This month, we're doing six through 10. So that's what we're building on. And the bonus prize is if you can go from one to 10, okay? So that song will sing them for you or just crack open your Bible or your Bible app. It's the first 10. Are you going to do a memory verse for us? All right, go ahead. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Simeon 1, and Simeon 2. The, lo the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom should I fear? All right, good job, good job. So he covered everything right there. Good job. What you going to do for us? Memory verse. All right, memory The Lord verse. is my light and salvation. Whom shall, whom shall I fear? There you go. Whom shall I fear, right? There you go. And, and like I said, we're getting a little slim on it. I know there's no candy in there. Y'all love the candy, but. <laughs> Clearly, we don't like educational toys. <laughs> That's all that's left is books in here. <laughs> I got y'all on next week. Don't worry. I got y'all on next week. That one's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> next week. And we're going to have our big prizes on fourth Sunday because fifth Sunday is Easter. So fourth Sunday is where we'll have our big prize bag if you do um, all of the, the books, the one through ten and all of that, which we have had some do already. So they're already ahead of the game on that. So good job, guys. Good job. Hey. I'm sorry, Superstar. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You have to. All right, coming soon. You want to discuss this, Christina, the spring discussion panel? That is. Okay, so the spring discussion panel, this is going to be a panel of your own peers. So glory kids are going to have older glory kids on the panel. You get to ask them your questions. Um, I don't see the box yet, but if you have a question, think of it, and um, we're going to write it on paper. We usually put a box out. You can start um, stuffing them in the box, and we'll present them to whoever's on the panel, and they will answer your questions in real time right here just for you. So get your questions ready. Interesting. Oh, Easter program. So it is 331. This is the fifth Sunday, right? So risen with Christ. Give God the praise he is worthy of. Sign up to participate in the form of song, dance, poetry, or speech. All ages are welcome to glorify the king. See Sister Jamie. Well, she's not here today, but Sister Christina. See her after service if you need a partner. All right. We are transitioning Thursday night Bible study. So we are now going from Blue Jeans video conferencing platform to Zoom. So um, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact media at restoreglory.org or text us at 850-997-7422. It is time for that change. So we are now on Zoom. So see media at restoreglory.org if you have any questions about the transition, the transition, sorry. All right, we still in March, huh? Yeah, we still in March, yeah. <laughs> Last time we was in April, so, well, February. Yeah, I'm going live still, man. I'm gonna get it together, yeah. March, okay, so our overall goal is $485,000. The monthly goal is $2,500. Donations given slash for it so far is zero. The amount needed is $2,500. So what do we need to do, church? Yeah. All right, y'all didn't sound too enthused. So what do we need to do, church? Yeah. All right. Catch it, hold it, keep it. All right. Um, we do have a uh, visitor, some visitors, Mrs. Burgundy and Wayne Hayden from Tallahassee. So we want to welcome you all to Restore Glory. We hope that you come back and visit us. We would love to have you. We are here. Um, as you see, we do Thursday night Bible study at 7 o'clock on Zoom, and we are here every Sunday at 2 o'clock. So you're welcome to join us. Um, please send your announcements before 12, the day before service, to media at restoredglory.org. Any announcements sent in during service will be announced the following service. And those are announcements.
Amen. We just thank God for this day, and we thank God for what has been said and done. Father God, we just give you glory and honor because it all it belongs to you. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You know, I, the song they were singing when it says, you know, he's, um, uh, I can't think of the word or not, but anyway, it's every day. <laughs> it has something to do with every day. God is blessing us, and he's keeping us every day. You know, um, if you are not happy, just think about every day God is keeping you. He's blessing you. No matter what's going on, he's blessing you. I was coming to the church this morning, I was thinking about the things that he showed me. And there's times that he keep things away from me because I don't see it. I can't handle it right now. But he's blessing me. And I just believe that with my whole heart that he's blessing me because every now and then, my heart rejoices. And, 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 and when you hear the birds singing in the morning time, when you can see the sun come up and then... Some days you can see the clouds and the rain and the grass turn green and the flowers start shouting and it just makes your heart rejoice knowing that God not only keep me, but he keep, hallelujah, he keep his earth. And we just praise God for being a good God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, the word has already been said today in love and respect and uh, Brother Brooks and I was classmates, so if the teachers had a way up on you, uh, <laughs> they earn your respect, and they, 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 they took that thing literally in the Bible and it said, "Spare the rod and it's, <laughs> it's for the child." They didn't spare the rod, <laughs> so so it was. They made that your respect. They kind of printed it on you. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, we we thank God for His Word today. We thank thanks for, for the Holy Spirit. This walking through the aisles and blessing you and touching you and anyone that had a heart that was aching this morning, I pray that God has truly entered your heart. Let us stand and we have be dismissed. And we have a saying, let's see if uh, James, y'all got it up? I don't know whether everybody know it yet, but um, yeah. Let us say this in unison, and now let us start. Everywhere we go, we'll let everybody know that the word of God will do what church? Restore your glory. Now bless my real big and go with the blessing of the Lord. And he says so.